Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Best of Television Podcast Part 2. Upcoming right now, we are going to hear from Drew talking about Stranger Things and then Ravina. Jordan and myself talking about Westworld. You guys aren't going to want to miss this episode, so please stick around for the show. I want to talk about a show that is sweeping the nation here, uh, and that is one you can catch on Netflix called Stranger Things. And some of you have already watched it, and if you haven't, you guys need to jump on this, okay? It's a Netflix original. It's only eight episodes long, so... It's an eight-hour adventure. It's a quick sit. If you want to watch it all in one business day, I'm sure you can, or you can take the weekend to do it. Um, Most of the press involving this has been the delight that people are having with it being an 80s throwback. It's very early uh, Amblin Entertainment. It's those old sort of E.T., Close Encounters, mixed with a bit of that early Stephen King, John Carpenter stuff. Because it takes place in 1983, so there's a lot of little, um, a lot of little. There's very much homage to 83 with the little references and stuff, uh, and it follows mostly uh, kids are the main characters, which gives that sort of Steven Spielberg type feel. Um, but but oddly enough, in this in this sci-fi slash thriller TV show, there's seemingly just looking at the cast more questions than answers and the the star of the show is Winona Ryder and for a lot of you out there um that are from the 1990 to now you're wondering who is Winona Ryder and from those that grew up in the movies from the 80s you're like oh she's still around so Winona Ryder is the star of this film or the series and in, in in other weirdly enough is that um the the sheriff in this town um that's uh <laughs> that's that's in the show the guy that plays him David Harbor he's mostly known as being like a bad guy or kind of a jerk uh in other uh, films that he's in, but in 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 all honesty, it's it, his character itself is, can be a bit jerkish, and they go into a bit of uh, his psychology and why he is the way he is in the very last episode. But even he's kind of against Cass in this. He's um, he's the sheriff, but he's not. Uh, embroiled in being the logical character, he's really embracing a lot of the ridiculousness that happens in uh, the show. And it starts off with the disappearance of one of these kids, and it turns into the show. It, it's it's a bit fantasy, and it's a bit sci-fi. So the, those best elements working together um, to go through is there is a creature that is abducting uh, folks, and you explain where that creature comes from. And then there's another kid that shows up in the show that exhibits certain powers that uh, they have uh, ESP and that not to mind reading, but can can track minds and able to follow and hear basically what they're doing uh, and move her consciousness over to sort of view them and the way that they put that together the way that they put this character and the mission that she had and this creature that's abducting kids or really just really anybody just easy targets the way that they combine that is another great genius thing 
Um, the folks who created the show, they go, they go by the name, uh, the Duffer brothers, sort of similar as to, uh, the Wachowski brothers. Now I think they call themselves the Wachowski sisters. Um, how they approached this, they created and wrote the show, have no problem acknowledging those things that you thought were familiar. So when people are like, oh, it's like Steven Spielberg or, you know, the, the Amblin Entertainment, like, yes. And they will flat out tell you that this is what they used as, uh, their their inspiration for it uh when the show starts off with the the abduction of the kid winona Ryder plays the kid's mom and so it follows her anguish and her attempts to communicate with him because she doesn't believe that he's dead and he's trying to communicate with her basically in another dimension or reality um it's a fun show it's a fun show and in short of the last episode um, it's not really that graphic of a show. It doesn't get bloody. It doesn't get graphic. It's not gratuitous with anything like that. Even the language used in the show isn't, there's not dropping a lot of, you know, F bombs and they're not, um, slinging out a lot of, uh, adult language in the show. I mean, there's, there's a few cuss words, but they, uh, they, they keep it a lot of that suspense style, very similar to what, uh, Steven Spielberg did in Jaws. You know, before they really showed the shark in it, they they hinted at the power and the size, and that was basically just a trick because the the machine wasn't ready yet. The big giant um, animatronic shark wasn't ready yet, so they had to do other things that would keep the suspense up, but give you an idea. And this show does a little bit of that, although it does kind of show what the thing looks like in flashes. You don't really get a full look out of it until way later on. Um, it, 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 it keeps it to that. Now the last episode has it not even, it's not bloody graphic, but there's some kind of gross things that occur in it. So that might be a little damaging for young children to watch, but, um, the show otherwise, otherwise, you know, other than that, it can be a little scary for little kids, but if you got, you know, those preteens, uh, those kids that are watching that they can watch a little bit more adult type things, uh, it's a good show for them to watch and very fun for adults to watch as well. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit GSMC. SMCpodcast.com for more info. I heard that um, basically it's like uh, a lot of this company. That created a virtual reality, but with humans. Yeah. And now the people are starting to show signs of the glitches. Yeah. So, like, did it start to get scary after that part? A little bit. People were. There's some really suspenseful stuff. The 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 main antagonist is what's really scary, though. Like the um the man in black. The man in black. Yeah. He is. Whoo. He was great. He was very compelling. Everybody's great. Anthony Hopkins is in this. Like. Everyone just plays their part so well, so and well. everyone just drags you in. You know, like when you see a show and you're like, I, I don't know, but I really want to see with that character, what's going on with them. Every character I'm excited to see. Oh, I yeah. can't remember a time I've been this excited about a, uh, like an HBO show, like the premiere Since of Since Game of Thrones. Since Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. this felt like Game of Thrones because this it felt, felt better epic. than Game of Thrones. Like, I would rather watch Westworld. Uh, you know, I this feel is like my cup of tea. It's only one episode in, but I definitely feel like it's heading that way for me too. Westworld was just intense, oh. and the fly thing. Yes, <laughs> the fly thing. So, if you're not familiar with Westworld, Westworld was an old um, 1973 film of the same name, and it, it's a similar concept, but this is more of a reimagining. And it starred Yul Brynner, who is a very popular Western actor, and Yul Brynner played the Man in Black yeah. in the original movie. I actually really like that movie, and it, it's really funny because, like, a couple years ago, my dad and I were having conversations about what we would like to see remade, 
And of course, we always talk about Logan's Run and a couple other like sci-fi films that we we think need an update. Westworld was one of the ones that we brought up. And um like we were talking about how like if they updated Westworld, like it would be amazing and then they go and do it. So like this is everything I've ever wanted. Mm. Can I tell you something I really want to happen with Westworld? Did you know that the person who wrote Westworld also wrote Jurassic Park? Oh really? He had an affinity for theme parks with cool <laughs> themes that went wrong. <laughs> so so one of the things that's interesting about the show and, and Ravina touched up on it a little bit is that um they're basically animatronics. Mm-hmm. But like really highly advanced animatronics, and they retain a little bit of memory. So it's got kind of a an animatronic type thing going on, but then also a little bit like. Have you ever watched Ex Machina? Have you guys watched Ex Machina? Um, no, I haven't. But the robots. Wait, kind yeah, of no, me- no, I have. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that movie. The robots remind me of the robots from Ex Machina a little bit. Just where they seem real, but they're not. Yeah, there, there's this disconnect, but you can definitely feel like there's more going and on behind the scenes. There's just this whole uneasy feeling the entire time. Like I, I love the commentary on humanity, you know, in this show. I think what it um, reminded me of, uh, I'd say, uh, it reminds me of a hypnotized person, the Ex Machina Westworld, where it's somebody where they're a person, but they've, they're under some kind of control. Like you a know? spell. Yeah, like a yeah. spell. That's what, and that's like my favorite kind of, you know, robot right there, because that is the creepiest one whenever oh, yeah. they're just stuck by something, but and you, you know, can tell there's something going on, you know. Something, like they could just lash out at any moment. Yeah. That's something that scares me too. I love the way they opened it too. Now, the way they opened it with um, that gentleman uh, and the girl, like, you know what I'm talking about? With um oh god yeah that's, yeah well, and then there's a bit the of a racy with the scene all black. the murder and yeah the, yeah I'm kind of wondering what's going on with that couple no I if there was a lot of leads that I just going to follow and I think Sunday's ma- now my new favorite night because of Westworld oh definitely I I don't normally I normally wait for a show I can't wait for Westworld I'm gonna watch it when it comes out I think me too me too definitely yeah HBO is always doing good stuff. Uh, they do have a few shows that I'm not quite into, but they always got something for me. Like, just they always do. So I'm very impressed with HBO lately. I don't know about you guys. What would you rate this? Uh, well, I I would rate it. I'm, I'm going to say a perfect five. I mean, definitely it had everything I wanted. This is what it, this is what yeah. what I'm looking for in a show. You know, I didn't want to give things a five because I think five is like especially perfection. right off the bat. We wanted to give it like you know yeah. A couple I, I don't. I want to give it a couple episodes, but like if I were to rate it right now as it is, if this was just a standalone film yeah. as it is, I would give it a five. Like I I was so content. Ravina, you have to watch this show. Just uh, make sure you have the lights on. You're doing a television podcast. Watch Westworld. It's crazy. I know. I should have watched it, but I got scared. But maybe I will with the lights on tomorrow at like around 10 a.m. And that about wraps it up for the Golden State Media Concepts television podcast. You can find us on Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, Golden State Media Concepts Podcast.com, and hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for listening, and tune in next time for the Golden State Media Concepts television podcast. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.